When you hear about greenhouse gases, you mostly hear about CO2. But methane traps 85 times more heat. It just isn't as prevalent. That may change. Methane's rate of increase recently jumped by a factor of 20, leaving climate scientists alarmed. California even passed a bill requiring significant methane reduction by 2030. Wastewater treatment, landfills, livestock, and petroleum extraction are largely responsible for our methane emissions. Luckily, we can capture them as biogas, a clean and renewable energy source, rather than releasing them into the atmosphere. Some industrial sites already do, especially the large ones, and they can make a profit by generating electricity and selling it back to the grid. But why don't all of them? Well, any engine that has a lubrication system, in a sense of a bath, where oil is collected and distributed to the engine during its running, uh, is going to be a source of uh, contamination by the H2S, the hydrogen sulfide that exists in almost all uh, biogas. And it makes the lubrication very acidic, primarily sulfuric acid, and that, of course, then eats away the parts very quickly. And it also could have a high amount of siloxane. It's a basic, very fine sand. That sand, when it's that hot, it's melted and it'll adhere to engine components. And that will build up over time and eventually the valves will no longer work and they'll start to break as they're moving up and down against their, their close points. Given the cost of maintaining this generator or of trying to filter out the siloxane and hydrogen sulfide, most methane emitters can't afford to use their biogas. So they release it into the atmosphere or burn it in a process called flaring, which releases other pollutants. The World Bank estimates that $30.8 billion worth of biogas is flared annually. We concluded through our analysis that if this gas, this biogas, was turned into electricity, you could still uh, provide enough electricity for 30 million homes in America. My name is Paul Mahler. I'm president of Freedom Motors. We're a developer and uh, producer of rotary engines an engine that's particularly suitable for the use of biogas as a fuel. Paul's engine only has two moving parts, where a normal piston engine would have over 30, and it doesn't have a traditional lubrication system, which means no sulfuric acid. And there aren't any valves for the siloxane to gather on. Freedom Motors acquired a company called OMC, which had produced 65,000 of these rare rotary-type engines for their snowmobiles. Freedom Motors replaced the rotor bearing with a resilient, high-load counterpart made by IKO. The housing and end plates are now liquid-cooled, doubling the effective horsepower. Combined with proprietary changes to the rotor and wear surfaces, these innovations have produced a dependable engine that thrives on biogas. The maintenance required on the engine is really minimal. It's just a matter of doing oil changes, water changes, things like that. This particular field is a very good opportunity for us because the market price of a competing engine is nearly 10 times higher, especially when the size of the landfill or wastewater plant or something is small to medium size rather than very large, which really is most of it. I mean, 95% of them fall into the category where our engine fits. For example, there are over 50,000 dairy farms in the U.S. The average farm has 180 cows, which produce enough methane to power a 55-kilowatt generator year-round. That's five households' worth of electricity per farm. It's possible in this product, with our tremendous advantage in cost, we can go out there again and get into it without having to invest a lot of money. Thank you for your interest in Freedom Motors. If you'd like to learn more about the Rotopower engine and its potential, visit freedommotors.com.